Hi guys and welcome to another episode. My name is Steve White and I created and designed the Steve White podcast just to give you a place of empowerment, inspiration, wellness and positivity. I hope that you find some healing and strength while I help you to see the beauty in the grey area. Human values are extremely important in life. And we all should be willing to sacrifice almost anything to live a life founded upon a healthy set of values. Honesty, integrity, love and happiness are some of the values that human beings seek to attain, practice and live with. But it's not always easy to live these in a world that often promotes and projects negativity. Whether it's from the news, social media or high profile public figures modelling destructive behaviours, it can be a struggle to hold on to our values in a contradictory space. My guest today is a gentleman who embodies what it means to stay aligned with your values in an ever-changing world. Nate Lucas is a strength and conditioning coach who has travelled the world as a coach, helping athletes to enhance their performance. But it could be argued that his countenance, energy and dedication to his own personal set of values is just as impactful as the knowledge and physical training that he provides. Nate, so humbled to have you join us. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate you inviting me on your show. All right. Well, let's just get straight to it. I've had the honor of being able to spend prolonged time with and around you. And through many of our lengthy conversations, it's clear to me that you take great pride in what you do and that it's not just a job to you, but also that there is a genuine care for your athletes and their well-being. It's easy when you have all the information to just keep it to yourself and use it for your own personal gain. But what is it within you that sparks this desire to want the best for others too? Well, uh, I credit a lot of that to just my upbringing, uh, the way my my parents were and the way they, they taught myself and my, my brother to be um, just in the household and with other people. I think a lot of that is, is to do with the some of the coaches I had growing up as well. One of them being uh, Jay Williams. He was my, my youth coach. And he had a moniker, which was each one, teach one. Anytime you're in a position where, you know, you have some knowledge or, or you have some insight that could help someone else out, you should be willing to pass that forward, you know, or pay it forward. So that's kind of always been my thing. And I, I've just struggled a lot, you know, with, with a lot of different things kind of growing up. Sometimes I didn't have all the answers and I still don't. And, you know, I, I didn't know who to turn to in order to, you know, find a solution. Right. So being that I went through certain things, when I see someone else who's also trying to either get to where I'm going or, or where, where I am, am currently, I just try to, to help them out. So just steer them in the right way so they don't walk around banging their head and wasting their time with things that, you know, have nothing to do with where they're trying to get to. So I just try to streamline people's process and teaching them is teaching me if I can just help you know make the future better in some way shape or form then it just it's a pretty fulfilling thing to to kind of see that then that's that's part of your legacy people are also part of your legacy it's not just Mm -hmm. what you leave behind in terms of something you you build or or something you create it's also the, the people that you know you educate as well that that's the legacy and anyone involved in in a profession that involves any type of education. So to me, like teachers, obviously, you know, we all know they're educators, but coaching is, you're, you're a teacher as well. It may not be in a classroom, you know, it could be in a weight room, could be in a field, could be on a court, but you're still teaching and you're passing knowledge on. And that athlete, when they go on to, you know, the next level or to another coach or to another team, they, they're going to say something about you by how they, behave themselves, you know, how knowledgeable they are of the weight room and their body and things like that. That's a legacy too. So just wanting to to leave behind something good. That's such an important quality to have. And it's really a reflection of probably your upbringing and your family and the lessons that you've learned within your life, because people's value systems are usually developed and reinforced through the culture in which they grow on one side and the environment on the other parents, religion, friends, personal experiences and society, they all contribute to the formation of the values that we have as individuals. These individual values are affected by our belief systems, prevailing social systems and to some extent socio-economic conditions. You always seem to be so patient and methodical in your approach but also someone who 
works to routine and consistency. These are all traits that I guess are pillars of your faith. How do you feel your faith, upbringing and religious beliefs impact your approach to life and your work? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's not a subject that I often get to talk about just because, um, you know, it's not always the appropriate time. Uh, and you always have to, you know, you have to read the temperature of the room. You know, I, I try not to be that guy. I was like, oh, okay, you know, Nate's giving a sermon, <laughs> <laughs> right? But definitely uh, what I can do is just show f- through my character things that I believe in, the pillars, as you as you put it, that I, up- I try to uphold in my day-to-day life um, as, as best as I can. That's important to me. You know, that, that shapes my character. Uh, I'm a Muslim. You know, it's it's hard to to come across you know other Muslims in the field that I'm in, especially out here in 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 the UK or the US. And a lot of times, I'm the I'm the only one that is Muslim on a staff or on a team or you know whatever the situation may be. So I just try to give my my best example, you know, because maybe that's the only encounter that someone's gonna have with a Muslim, and I just want to leave them with as much positivity and you know just good example as possible you know just first and foremost for myself because that's that's um how i'm trying to live my life and i'm trying to live my life in accordance to you know what my creator wants me to do and yeah just to benefit other people but yeah a lot of times i I fall back on on those things you know sometimes i'm close to losing my patience you know and i have to remember okay you know what you know this isn't even something that important you know it, it in the grand scheme of things, you know, why, why get mad at, at this little thing? So it just kind of pulls me back from maybe going overboard or going beyond the bounds. Um, it also just keeps me in a certain frame, right? Because a lot of times there are a lot of different things that are happening around you. And not a lot of those things, you know, are great for you to, you yourself to take part in. So I just, hold on to my values and, and it keeps me from delving into things that could be quite destructive at times that I've seen maybe exhibited by my players that I've coached or, or you know, other colleagues that, that I'm, I'm working with. It's not to try and, and judge anyone. You know, ev- everyone's has the freedom to, to do as they please. Right. All, all we're doing is just conveying messages to each other and try to show each other the right way. You know, but I know that, some of those things, you know, if I get into them, it, it could, it could ruin me, throw me completely off where I need to be. It's just, it's just a lot of uh, temptation floating around there, you know, especially when you're surrounded by, you know, top pro athletes, you know, a, a lot of people want to be around them. A lot of people want to be them. A lot of people want to be with them, you know, and you're just kind of thrown in the mix, mm. right? Just having, having those parameters, having that faith, it just kind of helps me navigate that world a little bit Uh, a lot of times i actually you know encounter maybe one or two other muslims either another staff member or an athlete right and i take i take it upon myself to try and allow that person to to just feel like it's it's okay for them to to be muslim It's, it's okay for them to to, to, you know, want to go pray or, or to fast or something like this, right, in that environment, because no one else is doing it around us, you know, and sometimes, you know, you feel a pressure to just not want to stand out and not want to, uh, I guess, just be the odd one out, you know, you just want to blend in with everyone, right, and, you know, just being aware of, you know, just some of the difficulties that you can face in trying to, you know, live your life, um, you know, as a, as a practicing Muslim in, you know, a, a professional sports environment, you know, I just try to, to kind of put down those barriers and I try to help accommodate for that as much as possible. So there's been teams where I've worked on and, you know, we, the last team I was on, we had three uh, Muslim athletes, right? And it was a month of Ramadan and, you know, we were in the playoffs. And the playoffs for anyone who isn't, you know, a follower of sports is is a time where you're trying to compete for, uh, 
you know, a, a finals position, you know, you're trying to get to the finals. This is now the, the epitome of the, of your competitive season. Right. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, athletes, they may feel pressured, you know, maybe the coach, they're not Muslim. They don't have those, those tennis that they follow. So they don't understand. Like, oh, what do you mean you're gonna fast? You, you're not. What you're not gonna fuel? You're not gonna hydrate yourself? Like you know, what's this? And if they feel like they have no one to talk to and and no one that can help them kind of navigate that, then you know they they fall short on fulfilling that obligation. All right. So I'm there to you know do the research. Okay, how can I help this person in this situation in this environment with these uh, competitive objectives still do this in a way that's safe, you know, and allows them to, you know, just import most importantly, fulfill that religious obligation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, I, I would have conversation with the coaching staff and I'd say, look, like this month is approaching. So I already, I already have a plan in place. This is what they're going to do. Um, and you know it's it's nothing it's nothing to worry about you know you know they they're still going to be here it's just you're going to have to accommodate for certain things during this period of time and of course okay great fine no problem just you know do what you need to do and then we trust you go ahead right and for the athlete it, you know it it means the world to them sometimes cuz like man you know I, I was feeling really nervous about this you know but having someone to go through it with them helps them you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. on a, a, I remember on another team, you know, it was athletes on the other team that were Muslims. And I would go to half court before the game starts and I would, I would greet them and I would have like fruit so we could all just break fast together before the game starts. You know, it's just about caring for that because I know how difficult it is. You know, it's tough, man. Um, but you can do it, you know, so long as you have a plan and so long as you're, you're smart. And so long as you communicate, you know, that this is an important thing to you and, and that you're, you're going to go about it, you know, in a smart way, you know, so it just, 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 again, it's just being in those shoes and wanting to make things better for the next person coming up. And I, I believe that's something that makes me stand out from a lot of other people as well. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't always have to be something that you look at and you're like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just different, you know, I'm just, I'm going to cause like, you know, a disruption to the flow of things. No, like you should look at it as, you know, I am a person with a different point of view and, and different, um, uh, just a different circumstance, you know, and I can bring benefit to you guys because I know how to deal with this athlete. I know exactly what I need to do for them. I know exactly what they're going through. So I can help you navigate this, right? So don't look at it as, you know, something that's detracting. Rather, look at it as something that it expands you and it expands your value. That cannot be easy. I mean, upholding such a strong set of values and always keeping, I guess, aligned to those values. When you're in a space where it's clear that your environment doesn't support your values, how do you handle that? I can't say that there's a uh, there's a, a set guideline because every single situation is is going to be a bit unique. Um, but I just try to I try to communicate as much as possible um, from the get go. As soon as I get in, I try to highlight some of the differences in my behavior. It's, it's kind of this is what I set up for myself. So I go in and I just. I just try to get it all off my chest as soon as possible. Um, so just asking, hey, you know, where can I pray around here? You know, I just I just have to pray real quick and I just need a space. I just need five minutes, you know. So now they know, okay, Nate prays, okay, and this is his thing. And I try to be very um, unapologetic about it. You know, I, I feel like whenever you ask permission to do something that, you know, is important to you, it matters to you, is it's, I guess, an obligation of yours. If you ask in a way where you're seeking permission, I think there people can really just start hacking things down. It's like, nah, you, you can't do that. No, no, we need you to do this or whatever. 
instead of asking the question, oh, can I go pray? I just, oh, I need to pray. Where can I go? Then it's like, oh, okay, all right, he, he's going to go do that, <laughs> all right? Mm-hmm. So just, yeah, just setting setting the table as soon as I walk in that maybe certain conversations I'm not really going to take part in. I'm sure it works both ways. There's the negative influence that can happen from being in the wrong environment, but also potentially the opportunity to impact how other people behave. Have you seen the change or adaptation in people that you work with in their behaviours when they spend time with and around you? In terms of people's behaviour changing around me, I I definitely noticed that uh, throughout my career or throughout my time, you know, on different teams, like maybe when I, when I came in, you know, you know, you're always just trying to get to know people, right. You know, you're just trying to get to know the athletes. You're trying to, um, start to build rapport, you know, as quickly as possible. Right. It's very important. And what I do, you know, uh, trust is a very big thing. You know, trust, uh, allows me to have buy-in from the athlete. Um, it allows them to, you know, confide in me and 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 speak to me honestly and tell me exactly what it is that they need. You know, when people speak to me, they maybe they notice, you know, he doesn't really curse like uh, all that much, or you know, he doesn't curse at all sometimes or whatever. And it gets to a point where if if they curse, they're like, oh man, they're apologizing to me. Mm. Maybe they they start picking certain things up from me. You know, I've noticed that, you know, I, one time I was in uh, I was in Portugal and we were there for preseason um, with with one of the teams I, I was working with. And one of the guys came up to me because I, I we had previously worked together on another team and we found ourselves on this new team now. And he said, you know what, Nate, you know, you, you're always just you're always just happy and, you know, like you, you're just calm. You know, every time I speak to you, you just you're always smiling. At, like, what is that? And I was like, oh, you know, just I, I I don't know what to tell you. I, I'm just I just don't allow like things that I can't control get to me like that as much as possible because you know there's nothing I can do about it, right? So I just try to focus on what I can control. You know, it's easier said than done. You know, but that's genuinely how I try to operate. You know, I, I'm just not going to be able to control every single thing. And he noticed that and he's, he started to try and compose himself in that manner. Right. And the way the certain conversation that we would have, you know, started to change. Like, okay. We're not going to come to Nate with this conversation. We're going to talk about other things. And it's just, I think it's, it is that just showing how different you are from some of the other people around them, you know, because being in an industry that's so competitive, like, like pro sports is, You know, whether you're an athlete or a coach, you know, everyone is trying to get in. Everyone wants the job that you have or wants to be the athlete that you are and the team you are, you're on and getting uh, the money that you're getting. So a lot of times you're surrounded by people who are just, you know, just trying to take advantage of you to either climb up a ladder or find something else and they, they can get you out or, you know, it's, it's a lot. So whenever you find someone who's just kind of genuine and they're not as concerned with some of the other things that those people are concerned with. I think it's just a breath of fresh air, you know, and guys kind of see, okay, you know what, if he's doing it, you know, maybe I can do that too. You know, maybe I can calm down. Maybe I can, you know, just not have to pretend like I'm something when I'm not really, you know, like I've had a lot of, that as well where guys is just you know hey i I just got to be this way you know so i can get by you know i'm like i I understand you know but that can get pretty tiring right and they're like yeah you know it it just opens the door for conversations and just a lot of learning you know and i learn a lot from them too being in your line of work it's all about routine and consistency and repetition some of these pillars are also seen within faith and religion and i'm sure there are some strong crossover values that can make people better athletes and people in general. How do you see the link between lifestyle and performance on this level? You know, all all of the questions you're asking, you know, they're they're excellent questions, man. Lifestyle and performance, you know, and whatever field you're in, it's it's important to to live, you know, a quote unquote healthy lifestyle in order to perform at your best. Right. If 
I don't know, a, a coach that a coach that I highly respect, and you know, I've, I've followed his work for a couple of years now. Um, he he coins uh, this one statement. He says, "Don't be a champ on the floor and a chump off the floor." Hmm. Right, and you know, it's, sometimes you know, they they're players. You know, uh, you'll meet them, and you know, they're excellent in terms of how they are on on the court. You know, in terms of their ability, in terms of their their athleticism, and all all of those qualities, they're excellent. All right, but then you know, their character is not that great. Right. And you can you can get pretty far on your talent, right? But you know, things like character, things like you know, uh, those intangible things or those soft skills, you know, like discipline and patience and um, just having a good nature, being a good teammate, you know, those things matter as well. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever anyone is recruiting you for a job. You know, it doesn't have to be sports anywhere. Whenever someone's recruiting you, they're not just recruiting you for, you know, the the, the education that you have or the skills that you, you present. They also want to see if you as a person fit into their company or into their organization. And if your values don't align with that, you know, most probably you're not going to make it. You're not going to last long there because you're constantly going to be butting heads with the culture that they're trying to establish there. Right. So, you know, I, I've, I've seen athletes who, you know, they, they make things difficult on themselves because they don't have a stronghold on their character and their, and their values. And those things that, you know, they're outside, those life things, as soon as they start to seep over into your field where you have to perform, then things can start running amok, right? So mm-hmm. if you're having, you know, bad relationships with people, right, that's mental stress, Mental stress uh, has a strong correlation with poor performance, right? So while you may feel like, oh, that's, you know, that's, that's my life. That's outside of here. That's none of anyone's business. If you don't have a stronghold on that, you know, it will start affecting your performance. I'm, I, I don't know if anyone else has been through that, right? But when I was young, you know, I'm lifting weights. I'm doing what I'm doing. Then all of a sudden, maybe I get into an argument with one of my parents or maybe, I experienced some sort of heartbreak, right? All of a sudden, that 20 kg weight that I can pick up like easily for like 12 reps, I can't even do one because all of a sudden, like I, I'm physically incapable because I'm feeling something emotionally or something spiritually kind of breaking down, mm. right? So I think the two go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other, right? And the mind is the pilot for the body. You, you can't have, you know, smooth sailing without, you know, the pilot being present and ready to go. You know what I mean? So yeah, man, when, when it comes to, to just myself, man, uh, I, I try my best to just ground myself in my faith, you know, and, and my faith, my, my parents and everything that they did for me, you know, in terms of instilling values and, you know, just being around, coaches and teachers that, you know, also helped shape me with some of the things they taught me also. That, that was all well and good. But for me, ultimately, the, the religion, like my religion, it, it gave me, you know, a wholeness, right? It gave me, you know, um, just f- like very, very strong and, and very concise, um, practical ways of handling life. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of it, you know, I would see, oh, you know, that's something that my mother taught me. You know, oh, that's something that my, my dad taught me. Oh, this is this is kind of the way that I feel about life anyway. Mm-hmm. So I gravitated towards Islam because of, you know, it, for me, it was like I was coming home. I was finally understanding myself better. And I was like, okay, this is why I'm a little bit different from some people. This is why, you know... I don't like to party because, you know, this is sometimes what it can result in. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was just, uh, I guess being okay with some of the things I already had within me and allowing them to now just flourish a little bit more. And to be that aware of 
like one your own struggles but also that process of you know bringing yourself back to that grounded place where you actually you remember the the foundation that you you've built your life upon um that really shows a, a dedication to um your own personal spiritual walk and so i know like prayer and fasting is a huge and important part of your life and in many ways it provides a sort of I don't know, spiritual rest, fellowship, communion with something greater than just striving for egotistical goals and accolades. Um, and I know I've, after, through looking for your work, you know, from a physical standpoint, I know that rest is very, very important and um, recovery is a very, equally as important part of training. But do you also advocate for rest from a mental and a spiritual standpoint? 100%. A hundred percent. I think, uh, you know, the, the two, again, they go hand in hand, you know, in order for, in order for your body to be able to recover and regenerate itself, mm -hmm. you know, the mind has to be in the right place. Right. So for example, uh, one of the things I do with my athletes after we finish, uh, either working out, uh, whether it's in the weight room or, we did something on, on the field, on the court. We, I always like to use a breathing exercise, right? So it's just belly breathing. You know, they either lie down, sit down, uh, usually lie down and just kind of put their legs up a wall. And I just ask them to focus on just their breathing. So breathing in through their nose for three seconds, out through the mouth for three seconds, and just continue that cycle and just focus on their breathing. Right. And mysticism behind that is, is purely just because, you know, when the mind begins to relax again, then the body shifts from the sympathetic uh, system to the parasympathetic system. Sympathetic is like, you know, fight or flight. You know, it all, if all of a sudden, Steve, like you're in your home and someone just comes up behind you and just tries to scare you, you know, all of a sudden you your sympathetic system kicks in and you have to figure out whether you are going to engage the situation or try to run away from the situation. Right. And that causes, you know, adrenaline to spike up, um, stress hormones start to spike up because your body is preparing itself for some type of action. Right. Now, whenever that happens, your body also, it, it stops digestion and all the other background uh, processes that happen when you're in a calmer state. So all I'm trying to do with an athlete after we get done working out is use something that will relax their mind so that the parasympathetic system can kick in again. And that's where recovery regeneration happened best. You know what I'm saying? So, that's so interesting. Yeah. That's so I, interesting. And it's, it's not, and it's not anything super scientific or super technical. It's just really, Sometimes I, I tell guys, like, dude, like, whatever you enjoy doing, just, just do that on your off day, and I guarantee you, you'll recover. So if, if you just want to spend the day with your family, and that's all you do, you're going to get some great recovery because your mind is relaxed. So mm -hmm. therefore, certain processes in your body will, will, will be allowed to take place, and then you'll feel fresh when you have to come back to training, right? And... Uh, for example, um, I used to work at a, um, I used to work at a, 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 a sales job, right? And I was working six days a week um, at a certain time. And on my off day, I would go to, to have a kickboxing class with my uh, youth kickboxing instructor, right? We're still friends to this day. He's like a big brother to me. And, um, you know, people would ask me at work, it's like, Nate, like, you're working six days a week. Like you just went to do kickboxing, man. Like, are you, don't you think that's kind of like crazy? You're not going to feel tired. Like, dude, you know what? Like I enjoy it. So all this stuff that I'm doing during the week is stress for me. Every time I go there, I don't feel stress. I enjoy what I'm doing and I'm just having fun exercising. And it, help, it actually helps me recover. Even though to you, it seems like I'm straining myself a little bit. I'm, I'm just, I'm enjoying it, right? And my mind is relaxed and afterwards my body feels good and then I can endure another week of doing this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the, 
it, it's it's important, man. You, you have to give yourself uh, time to to just allow the the mind to to just settle down, and and your and your soul as well, man. I, I had I had an athlete again. I'm sorry, this is like really long winded, but I'll go for it. There's so many things here that I think can benefit people, right? I, I had this one athlete. He was from Cape Verde. This is when I was in Angola, uh, the first pro team I, I was on. And the rest of the team had traveled. He had to stay behind because of a situation that he was handling with his papers or something like this, right? So I had to stay behind as well, and I was training him. So we would show up to the gym. You know, um, maybe he'll, he'll put up a couple shots and work on his dribbling, and then we'll do some strength work. We'll go home. So, and we were doing that every single day. Right. One day he shows up and I'm just looking at the guy and, you know, it's like his feet are just kind of, you know, just plodding along and his mood is really down and it's just taking him a while to get it into the swing of things. So I just stopped the workout and I was like, dude, like, like, you know, are you OK? You don't really seem like you're here, you know. And he was like, oh, man, you know, actually, like my grandfather is not doing too well. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, yeah, yeah I don't know, man. I, I was just thinking about maybe maybe just going out to visit him since the team is away. Just go for like one or two days and then come back. I was like, dude, 100%, man, go do that. You know, take care of that situation and then come back, you know, um, feeling confident to carry on because you've taken care of things. All right? And he went and he did that and he came back and he was fine. That's, and that's, that's so important because... I think sometimes we think we have to be all things to all people. And um, that can be the downside to a lot of talented and gifted people's success because they they spend their lives doing or being what everyone else expects them to be. Um, and especially within sports, you know, the demands of an athlete um, to win, to always be performing at a high level. But there's a very real life level that... Um, I think doesn't get much attention that once that athlete leaves that arena, he has a real life or she has a real life um, that is just as important, if not more important. And um, I, I, I feel that there is there is a slight disconnect between that in that you put on this kind of superhero outfit to perform and that the outfit covers everything that's underneath. But it doesn't remove everything that's un underneath. And so in terms of um, keeping a good balance with your performance and your lifestyle and your values, I think that breathing exercise that you you mentioned could be a good way to, again, stay present enough to realise if you're stepping outside of your value lane. Just, you know, something that would usually anger you, that moment to just breathe you know, and to say, actually, um, OK, my response doesn't have to be that. And and also being courageous enough to say, actually, um, I can't show up today because I've got things in my life that need to be dealt with. And and maybe that helps you by stepping away and then coming back. And sometimes you feel like you, you just don't have the time to do that. Right. But it's like, you know, the saying goes, you know, health is wealth. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not healthy, you know, it doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter the opportunity that you have. You, you don't have the capacity to take full advantage of that opportunity. You know, you need to take care of, of yourself. You need to take care of, of your mental space. Uh, you need to take care of, you know, just your, your social life, right? In order for, you know, the other things to also run well, you know, because those are the things that are actually more important. You know, wh why, why, do you, why do we work so hard, man? You know, why, why are we, you know, pulling all these hours that we're pulling, you know, why are we trying to, you know, strive for, you know, that higher position or striving to, you know, open up our own businesses and things like that. It's not just for the sake of just having a business. It's what having that opportunity will grant you access to. And all you're trying to do is gain access to, to the things you really want, whether that's more free time, you know, because when you have more wealth, you know, you're able to have a bit more breathing room because mm -hmm. you're not just running around like, oh man, I got to figure out, you know, where I'm going to get my next paycheck. 
know, you, you actually have some room to breathe now, you know? And yeah, man, it's just recognizing that. I think it, it just, it will just open your eyes to, you know, what's really important and help you reevaluate, you know, where your effort should go. I'm not saying that people um, should stop, you know, striving to do things or anything like that, or, you know, just take the, take your foot off the pedal. Just, just be smart in, in how you approach things and, Think of it in a holistic way, you know, like where you're not neglecting any any part of you. You know, you're just giving everything the right balance that it needs. And, you know, it's so true. You know, for in most cases, you are striving to get to a certain level, uh, whether it's to free up some time or to get to a certain level of wealth or riches or popularity or something that makes you feel like your life was worth something. But ultimately, that breathing room, you spoke about um, is available to you now if you just pause and breathe you know <laughs> you know that that space that space to um, just be present enough to to I guess reevaluate your values daily it's not just a okay these are my values and I'm okay it's a conscious daily thing you yeah, know because you something you just mentioned just kind of triggered mm-hmm. uh, this thought in my head but you know, in, in the pursuit of wealth, right? Um, this is, this is a, a, a narration from, from, from my religion mm. uh, that is passed down, right? And it says, you know, if you, if you were to give the son of Adam, so the son of Adam being a human being, right? Mm. If you were to give the son of Adam um, uh, two mountains of gold, he would ask for a third, right? So no matter how much wealth you get, you know, just your state as a human being is to always want more. You, you'll, never, you'll never be suffice, right? Because that's just your inclination. Your inclination is to always strive to have more. You know, you can never have enough, you know, and, you know, it can end. So you, you struggle to, to get more, right? And recognizing that about yourself, you know, it just helps you to to deal with yourself better, right? Like sometimes I think, you know, there, there's a lot of negative talk about, oh, just, you know, the weaknesses that you have and, you know, self-reflection and things like that. You know, people get really bent out of shape when they discover that they have a weakness, right? But for me, it's been the opposite. And like, if anything, like my religion just kind of allowed me to, just reflect on myself and, and, and my character and try to really understand what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses, right? And whenever I come across a weakness that I have, you know, I, I can either try to, you know, do my best to erase it and no longer let it be a weakness of mine. But maybe that thing is just, this is just something that I do. This is just, this is just a, uh, a quote unquote fault in my character, right? So I can try to minimize it as much as possible. Or I just give myself room to, you know what? I know that this is something I do. You know, it, it's just me. I, and I don't mean to. I just I'm just gonna try my best to not allow it to become, you know, too distracting or too destructive. Right? But mm-hmm. we're we're gonna have faults. You know, like no one, no one is no one is perfect, man. You know, like we're just human beings and we're all trying to, to figure life out, you know, but we have to figure ourselves out as well. And, and just what our tendencies are and what our inclinations are. And when you understand yourself better, I think you, you have a better relationship with yourself. All right. It's kind of like, you know, you, you have children and, and you as a parent, you're going to know your child better than anyone else. Because you spend the most time with them, you you've taken care of them, you watched them grow, you know all of their tendencies and you know their their little behaviors, everything. You have it down to a T. Even the way they cry, parents know. Okay, this cry means food. That <laughs> cry means sleep, right? So somewhere along the way, we, we kind of stop trying to learn about ourselves, and we're more concerned about learning about others and and learning about the world. But you kind of forget to to just look within yourself. It's like, okay, like, what about me? How have I changed? You know, what what are things that I still hold dear? What are what are 
morals that still mean something to me and what are morals that I no longer have, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, that, that's important too because the better you can understand yourself, the better you're going to be able to navigate yourself through the world, the better you'll be able to sell yourself to other people and what you can benefit them with and what you won't be able to benefit them with. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's super important. And when you recognize that, you just, you, you just, I don't know, you become like a lightning bolt. You know what I'm saying? Everything is a hitter now because you know exactly how to strike. Um, essentially, what you're saying is that in order for you to have consistent and a sustained set of values in a changing world, you need to know who you are. You need to have a relationship with yourself um, so that you can see if you're living up to your values or not, or if things need to be adjusted. And it takes spending time with yourself. If you're someone of a different faith, then maybe it's just time with you and your God. Or if you you meditate or you pray, whatever it is you do, you've got to sometimes take yourself out of the world to be able to evaluate how you are responding and behaving inside of the world. Lastly, I know that there will be someone listening right now who perhaps isn't a professional athlete. They could be someone who's extremely out of shape, maybe never done any physical activity um, since they maybe were younger or have never been really inspired to do any kind of physical activity. Maybe this person wants to take better care of themselves and live a life that's more aligned to a productive set of values but doesn't know where to start. Can you give them some advice, both from a physical and mental perspective, on how they can do this? I think from a physical level, uh, just start to start to care more about yourself, right? Uh, this the same way you you put time and effort into, you know, honing. a a skill that you have or, you know, trying to be the best employee or, or whatever, right. Just take time to try and be the best self you can be. Right. Uh, There's, there's a, there's a quote and I forget, you know, who it is that that said it, but this, these are, this is one of my values, right. I started a brand, right. With my wife and you know, we have five standards that uh, we ask the athletes that work with us to uphold. And we uphold those two within ourselves, right? Mm. But the, the, the fifth one is your body, your responsibility, mm. right? And what, what I try to say there is that you, you, are the, you are the one solely responsible for experiencing the full strength that your body is capable of. No one else can do that for you. That is a journey that you alone have to walk on. People can guide you. Uh, people can, can, can advise you. People can show you the way, but you have to take those steps, right? No one can walk that walk for you, right? So just start to care more for yourself and, and really demand the best out of your, your physical self, and your, your best physical self is exactly that. It's not, okay, I'm going to be like this person or I'm going to be like this athlete. It's just how good can you be with what you've been given, right? If you can just focus on that, then you, you'll be satisfied and you'll be happy because you, you know that you're giving it your best, right? So it's just making, making that switch, okay? Like I'm, I'm going to demand the best out of myself and the, the way to start that is, you know, obviously physical activity. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You know, if you're not used to it, uh, don't know where to start, you know, just be a bit more active. And that starts with the choices that you make. So if there's a journey that you can make on foot or by bike instead of using the car, then, you know, start there. You know, just try, try and do that. You know, it's a small journey. Maybe you can get to the grocery store just walking. Just take a walk, you know, maybe it'd be good for you. Get some fresh air or whatever, you know, that's a start, right? Maybe instead of taking the elevator all the time, you know, go go up the flight of stairs, right? Carry your bags, right? Instead of, you know, just trying, trying to put them on the trolley, actually carry them to the car, 
right? It, it's I doubt it's going to be a hundred kg worth of shopping that you did, right? So just carry it. You know, work on your grip. You know, work on on staying stable and not falling to the floor carrying bags. <laughs> I don't know, right? But just find ways to start adding more activity into your life. And then from from a mental standpoint, taking time to just reading the situation before uh, reacting to something. And I mean that in terms of we live in the world that everything is like very, you know, reactions, right? It's always about reacting, reacting as fast as you can to, you know, new information, new developments or something like that, right? It's beneficial to sometimes not react so fast. You know, just taking that extra time to analyze a situation allows you to see a different insight or a different point of view or, just, you know, it just gives you enough time to really understand what's happening. That's something that, again, I got that from the from the religion as well. You know, the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, he once uh, said to a person who they had uh, an episode of impatience, right? And he advised him, he said, uh, patience is when calamity first strikes. Being patient isn't, I'm going to have a fit now and curse the world out. And then, okay, but, you know, I'm going to be patient. No, no, that's, that's not what it is. <laughs> Being patient is, you know, whatever it is that you feel you, you're you about to throw out into the world, you you stop and you swallow that back in and then you just you just remain calm, right? React in a way that's, that's going to be more constructive than destructive. I love listening to, to, to scholars speak, right? And... This is one thing I, when I heard it, I was like, man, that, that just opened up everything for me, right? Well, one scholar, he said, um, do you know what the definition of wisdom is? And, and people will give you all types of things. If you ask anyone in the road, everyone will give you something different. But in Islam, the definition of wisdom is to do the right thing at the right time in the right way. Like I, I get goosebumps still to this day. It's just like, it's so, it's just so simple, but it's, such a complexity in it that you can actually break it down and write books on it. Right. But it's simple enough that even a child can understand it. Right. And that's, and that's what, that's what Islam is. You know, it's, it's, it's complex simplicity. Perfect. Well, thank you. I've thoroughly enjoyed this discussion. Um, I know that many people will benefit from just, again, like I stated at the top, your, your countenance, um, the patience in the way you speak, and um, obviously very, very relatable on many levels in many different walks of life, no matter where you are or what you're currently going through. I'm sure you'll be able to take something positive from this experience. So just thank you, bro, for being here and sharing this space with me. No, thank you, Steve. I, I really appreciate you allowing me to come onto your platform and just sharing some of the little things that I know. Some incredible food for thought and a lot of important things discussed. I do hope that you enjoyed this episode and take something away from it that can impact your life in a positive way. Please read the show description for more information on my guest and links to where you can see more of my works and subscribe if you want to hear more, no matter where you are in the world right now or what you have been through or what you are currently going through. I want you to know that this is not how your story ends. Thank you for listening and until next time, stay blessed and I wish you better days.